just waiting for the recording. Okay, the recording has started, so we are recording this lecture. Let's just take a moment to pray together and then we will get into our class today. Um, yeah, could uh, somebody open us in prayer? Maybe Thomas, if would you, could you open us in prayer, please? Sure, Pastor. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you for this wonderful day, Daddy. As we come to listen from your word, oh, Father, we are sitting here to listen and learn of that. Holy Spirit, help us, Father. Help us and help us to understand the things. Let the wisdom of God rest upon us and the pastor who is teaching. Father, let your anointing teach us everything. Let the anointing abide upon us. Let the wisdom of God be abide on us, Daddy. We thank you. We praise you for this wonderful time. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. The others are joining us. All right. So in this class on urban church planting, uh, we have gone through the introduction section. Where we just kind of, uh, and I will just do a quick review of what we did in the introduction. And today we're going to go into section two, where we're going to start talking about the practical aspects of um, urban church planting. And uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, although the focus is on planting a church in an urban context, that is uh, in a city or, or a large uh, metropolitan area, uh, this applies even to starting any kind of ministry, not just a church, but even if you're starting maybe a specialized youth ministry or you know, you're starting a specialized children's ministry or something else in an urban setting, uh, all of these, uh, these, con these ideas and learnings uh, can be applied. It doesn't matter whether it's a church or some other kind of Christian ministry, uh, you can apply these things. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to quickly just review you know, what we did in the introduction section and then go forward into um, into uh, the intersection two, right? So in section one, just a quick review. Uh, I share a little bit about my own personal journey, being involved in different uh, kind of work in the cities. Um, we emphasize that the Holy Spirit is to be our leader. So our dependence is on the Holy Spirit uh, in all that we do in the ministry. And then uh, we talked about, um, you know, what are we trying to achieve um, in church planting? Uh, we are trying to establish a community that is self-sustaining, community of believers uh, that are self-sustaining, that will establish God's presence, and that will also have influence in the community or in the region where this church is planted. And this would be the same or mostly the same in any kind of ministry Now we are looking at starting uh, in an urban context. We want that ministry to have influence in that community or in that region or perhaps even in the entire city. Then in, in the introduction, we also emphasize God's heart for the cities, that we must get God's heart and, ha and you know, pray over the city. Now, that is very important that we should feel what God feels so that we can see what God sees for the city. And one, one important thing for us is to keep praying for the city and asking God for strategies and ideas on how to reach the city and who are the people he wants you to go to. Right? Uh, one person and, or one church or one ministry or one Christian organization uh, will not be able to reach the whole city. Each one of us has a little part to play uh, in God, what God is doing. So God is orchestrating it, and each one of us must be sensitive, saying, okay, God, I'll do my part uh, in serving you in the city. So we need to get God's heart uh, for the city. Then we talked about the natural dynamics of urban centers, you know, how it's it's important to um, uh, get an understanding of what's going on in the city, in the natural you know, so we mentioned here are some things that you can look at uh, and you can, you know, take a slice of the city. Maybe not, you know, even if you don't want to survey the whole city, uh, even just the area in which you may be engaged to get an understanding of what is happening uh, in the part of the city where 
you are working and that is important so that you know we can um, pray pray for that city we can also understand you know where to target and what strategies to develop at the same time you must be aware of the natural spiritual dynamics of uh, urban centers so we talked about how you know even satan is at work the evil demonic powers that have worked that are influencing people uh, we must be aware of that and we could we could see expression of it in you know various aspects in the life of the people whether it's in the culture cultural or on the social the moral the other problems challenges that are happening uh, we can see expressions of um, the powers of darkness and so we must be aware of it we must you know act strategically preempt those things let me just did a quick uh, look at um, church planting and missions I, i didn't necessarily turn to every chapter um, but uh, you know in, in the book of acts uh, a lot of the ministry happens in the major cities of that day so i just wanted to impress on us that uh, right from the mm. beginning sorry can you hear me excuse me sir yes ஆட்டோட்மிட் Uh, in, in google classroom doesn't work so people get stuck outside all right let me just go back to the pdf and uh, and i don't know why that happens uh, in anyway, so what i was saying was um in the book of acts we see that um, you know a, a lot of the ministry was uh, did happen in uh, major cities of those days and uh, you know it is an interesting study we can you know study city by city that is recorded for us and how they impacted different cities i just kind of highlighted some of the key things you know how they they worked in philippi how they worked in corinth how they worked in athens how they worked in ephesus you know and the dynamics in each of these cities was different and then in rome when paul was there in rome so that was in section 1 which was you know an introduction to what we're going to be looking at So today we're going to get into section 2 which is where we're going to talk about practical aspects uh about uh, church planting and um Christian ministry in urban context. Uh, I have given you this PDF in um uh, the coursework section so you can download it from there. And uh we're just going to you know uh, I'm just sharing whatever I can and whatever you know we have learned um uh, in in the soul process um uh, and uh, you know hopefully you will be you know in in your own experience as you begin to do things uh, in your cities uh, in your areas you know there will be uh, additional learning that will happen um as you go along all right so uh, we're going to talk about these practical aspects and so the first thing is how do you get started and what are some things to keep in mind uh, when you want to get a church a local church a church plant or a christian ministry when you want to get it started in an urban center now uh, about the personal preparation that means what you do as a personally in your personal life uh, we will talk about it in another section towards the end uh, i feel that is like that is perhaps you know very important so i left it to the end so that uh, you know it's like here here's how you're really going to start with your personal life so those those personal things uh, i've kept it to the last section now uh, one of the things that we would strongly recommend is to have a core team uh, that you're going to work with right now there are times god will use us as individuals i'm not uh, saying uh, he won't work with us as individuals you know we see examples where philip uh, he went out uh, uh, as an individual we don't know if he had others with him but it seems like he went down by himself to samaria 
and he preached Christ there and you know a church was planted there in Acts chapter 8 so there are uh, there are um, that's it. God will use us as individuals. He'll give us a vision and say, go do it. So that is possible. I'm not ruling that out. But what we are placing before us is uh, wherever possible, try to work as a team. Even if you have two people, that's fine. You know, uh, if you have two or more people, okay, that's also good. You know, uh, we see this even in the ministry of Jesus that uh, when he had, uh, you know, he had called his 12 disciples, he sent them out two by two, you know. So there is that support that people give to each other. Uh, there's encouragement, uh, you know. There's there's that that benefit from being part of a team, even if it's two people. Uh, even Paul, uh, when he first started, it was Paul and Barnabas uh, when they they were sent out from Antioch. Later on, it was Paul and Silas, and then afterwards the team grew. You know, there are now other team members like Timothy and Titus and. Uh, Luke and many other people. That so later, uh, as things grew, his team also grew. But initially, uh, you find that Paul went uh, along with one other person. So uh, it is good. And so we recommend that if you can, uh, you know, start off with a core team. Now, how do you, uh, you know, get a core team? What are some things you you can do, right? Um, now, or what are, sorry, what are some things you need to keep in mind as far as a core team is concerned? Uh, here are some things just to, you know, for you to um, consider, and I feel these are very important, right? One is people in the team uh, must have a good, healthy relationship with each other, right? That means you should trust each other, uh, you should support each other, you're not competing with each other. So, uh, this therefore means that, uh, you know, hopefully you've known each other for some time. You know, so, uh, you can't just meet somebody and, hey, let's become a team and let's start. Uh, uh, and a God can orchestrate some things like that, but usually it is, you know, you've built a relationship of trust. Another thing is uh, you need to be aligned theologically and spiritually. You know, uh, that is also very important. Um, that uh, two of you or two or three of or, you know the team members in the team should be aligned together, you know, one heart, one mind, spiritually. Uh, if there are differences there, uh, eventually uh, that could cause a breakdown in relationships. And you know, uh, the enemy is strategic. He would use those things to cause a breakdown. And if the team falls apart, then the work will fall apart. So you need to have people who are aligned theologically. You, you see eye to eye, you're one heart, one mind uh, in, in spiritual things. Um, it's also useful to have a team where you can complement each other's gifts and skills. You know, so uh, somebody may be good in ministering the word, some may be good in you know leading worship, uh, some may be good in you know, other aspects that are needed for that kind of ministry. If it's a church ministry, usually it's prayer and pastoral care and evangelism and administration. These are some things you will think about. Uh, if it is, um, you know, some other kind of ministry, you, your, your team composition uh, should match the kind of ministry you're planning to start. Another important part of uh, people who are going to be part of the team is uh, that all must be committed to the vision of the church plant, the common vision. That means uh, you say, yeah, we are going, you know, we are here for this reason. Uh, people shouldn't have another agenda. You know, they shouldn't be going there. Okay. I'm going to that city and I'm going to start a business or I'm going to that city and I'm planning to, you know, start a restaurant. Well, you have to be careful about those things because then what will happen is their focus will be on their business, on the restaurant or whatever else they want to do uh, instead of the vision of the church plant. I'm not saying that they can't go there as church planters, but that has to be very uh, made very clear. Um, and, uh, I'm not saying that they can't go as, um, what is it, as tent makers uh, when they're going to plant a church. We'll be talking about that uh, uh, a little later. Uh, uh, that is okay. Sometimes, you know, there may be people in the core team will also uh, 
do some work to earn money. Uh, we see the Apostle Paul and his team did that in Corinth, also in Ephesus, also in Thessalonica, and then when they went to these cities, they worked and they planted a church. So um, that is fine. We're not against it, but uh, the, the focus should be, our, our main reason should be, we're going to plant the church. Then we're going to start this ministry. But the work we're doing is going to help us financially to sustain ourselves and the team. So there shouldn't be distraction and it should be very clear. And uh, also, um, uh, the leader, who is the person leading the team, should be very clear. You know, if the main person who's responsible, you know, the person who's going to make, you know, sometimes a final decision has to be made. Uh, you know, people have shared their points of view, but somebody has to make a final decision. Uh, somebody has to, you know, hear everybody and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Sometimes it could be difficult decisions. Uh, there has to be one person who's going to handle that. Was, was a leader of the team, you know, and so that person should be clearly identified. Uh, usually, if uh, that doesn't happen, if there's no clear, uh, clearly identified leader, you know, it, things will not go because everybody's waiting for the other person to take steps, you know, or to provide leadership. And uh, then usually you'll find that group's just stagnating. Uh, they're not able to move forward because there is no leader who's saying you're going up forward. So these are some things to keep in mind. All right now, uh, if you know when you are starting out, uh, uh, there could be various ways that you're starting. Maybe you're already part of a local church, and uh, that local church is sending you out to start. Uh, another church plant or start a ministry, then you do have the advantage of, uh, you know, uh, finding like-minded people, people who kind of fit some of these things we've talked about. Uh, you'd have the advantage because you can, in your own in current local church, find people who may come and be a part of the team, and then you can go together. So that's something you can do. Uh, if you're already part of a church and, the, and, the, uh, and your current local church is sending you out to start a new church or start a, a new ministry somewhere, this is an advantage. And, you know, uh, we uh, at APC, we like to do that, you know. Uh, that is, we like to send a team out. And many of the church plants, uh, I'm not saying all, but many of the church plants were started when we sent teams of people. In some cases, we only sent one person. I mean, you know, for example, our Bible college students, uh, uh, some of our Bible college students who graduated, um, for example, the church, you know, uh, people who went out from here, um, yeah, in, in Baloda Bazaar, in Nasek, in uh, the church in Odisha, the church in yeah, uh, Kalyanas, different, different places. Uh, it was one person who went. Uh, usually they were single at that time. They were not married. Uh, and uh, they went. Uh, we backed them up. We blessed them. And said, okay, go and start start the work. But we gave them some of these kinds of instructions, you know, on how to get started. Uh, things that we'll be talking in this section. Many of these things are what we shared with them. And we helped them through that process. You know, so... Um, and then eventually, you know, some they, they got married, so the spouse became part of the team and uh, people came and joined them and, you know, they could build a team in those uh, places. Uh, um, so we have sent out people individually because they were the only one who came from that um, city or from that town to study here in the Bible College and then we sent them to start a church. Um, uh, 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 but in some of the church plants, we sent teams. Uh, so one example uh, uh, is uh, when um, here in Bangalore itself, uh, uh, so APC Central was doing fine. We had South and we had uh, North. Uh, when we wanted to start APC East, that is Whitefield, and uh, I, I may not remember the year correctly, 
Uh, so forgive me if I make a mistake. It's uh, I, I, we have it documented, but I just can't remember the year correctly. But so I think it must have been. I'm thinking, 2012 or 2013, something like that. Um, when we want, you know, uh, it actually happened very spontaneously. Uh, I had actually gone to see one of our young people. Uh, we had a strong youth group, and one of our young people was in, admitted in a hospital. Uh, he had an accident, so he was in the hospital. So I had gone just to visit him uh, in the in the hospital, and uh, I was there in the hospital. And then there were other young people in that hospital room, uh, and you know they were they were standing around him, uh, the young men, the youth. And uh, while I was there, and I'm just going to meet this person, suddenly I just felt in my heart the Lord saying, what are you doing with all these young people? Uh, and it's a very strange place. I'm in a hospital. Uh, I've gone to see somebody who has you know, had an injury. And then uh, some of our young men are standing around. And the Lord is saying, what are you doing with these people? And so there, standing in the hospital room, God put it in my heart, with these young people, you start APC East, which is Whitefield. And Whitefield, for those of you who know Bangalore City, is an area that's pretty close to the technology park. A lot of uh, IT uh, places are there, and so IT offices and all that there. And so right there, after, of course, you know, we've prayed, and while we're just chatting, we're just talking, I say, guys, how many of you are ready uh, to be a part of the team that will go and start APC in Whitefield. I mean, it, it, it all happened inside a hospital room. And they all said yes. And so, you know, they, they became the core team. Uh, uh, and of course, we, um, uh, one of the young men uh, who, was, uh, who was one of the youth pastors then, we appointed him as the leader of that core team and so with that core team, we went and we planted uh, APC East, that is in the east part of Bangalore, which is in the area of Whitefield. So that's how we started that. You know, so um, uh, uh, the, the point I was saying is uh, we had a core team to st help start that work. And the big advantage with that was this, the, these young people were already part of our church for quite some time. So they actually, and they were serving, they were volunteering. So we didn't have too much training to do. We just had to say, hey, go and start. They immediately, all of them knew, you know, okay, this is how, these are the things you need to do to um, have host a Sunday service. These are the things that need to be done if you're going to care for people in the team. So they, we actually did not have any formal training as such because they were already serving in our main location. They all knew what needs to be done. We just had to say, go and start, and they were ready to start, you know? So they were all volunteering, helping out, and, you know, we, we got that started. So, you know, a, a lot of things fit in because they already had good relationships amongst themselves. They were all part of the youth, um, spiritually all aligned. They belonged to the same church community. Um, they knew how, uh, you know, the, the culture of the church, and they knew how things needed to be done so they could complement each other. They just took their positions based on their existing gifts and skills, and they were committed. Uh, you know, of course, uh, I, I would say all of them today, except for one, uh, are in Bangalore. They all, all sorry, all all of them ex have left India except for one. So they're all now overseas, but you know, because they are young professionals and they are. Um, they are, uh, you know, they have their jobs, and their jobs give them opportunity for growth. So I would say, in, a, in, in the, from the core team, only one of them is still here, and out of, out of them, you know, maybe six to eight people. I think all of them are overseas now. But the point was, at that moment, for the initial, I think, at least two years, they were all committed to planting that church and seeing it go, uh, uh, grow well. And uh, we appointed, there was a clearly identified lead, leader. The youth pastor could be easily appointed as the leader of that group because uh, they all they all knew him, they all respected him, and he already had you know some experience on leading 
a, a group. So uh, what I wanted to say, I'm sharing that example because if you already have a local church where people are serving, it's very easy to form this core team to go plant a church or start a ministry. And like that, that's how we started uh, ABC West. And like, like that, how we started many new ministries. Uh, when, it, when we wanted to launch uh, our counseling ministry, I just you know called, picked out about three or four people from the church congregation who were counselors, who had some background in counseling, uh, and they formed the core team. Uh, so they were professionally trained, but they were spiritually also very aligned because they were already part of the local church. So whether it is starting a new ministry or starting a new church plant, if you have people you know, who kind of fit into these, these criteria, it becomes very easy to start out uh, new work, whether in the same city or even in other cities. So keep this in mind that, um, you know, if you are already part of a church where, uh, you know, you, you've been growing and, and you feel you need, and the church wants to send you out to start another church or another ministry, it's very good to find people from within the congregation uh, who, you know, will commit to the same vision and they can help form the core team. The core team uh, is very important. Sorry, uh, let me just pause here and see if there are any questions before I go into the next uh, uh, um, idea here. Uh, any questions on this, on, on the core team? Uh, is it clear or any thoughts? Anything you want me to clarify? Okay, so I think everyone's following, um, no questions. Um, all right, so there's a question here, uh, Kieran's asking, how do I identify um, church or vision? Kieran, what is, uh, what is your question? Is it is the question, uh, how do we determine whether we should plant a church or start a ministry? Or what exactly is your question? Can you uh, just clarify your question a bit so I understand it? Sir, sir, how we will identify the, our vision and our church? If church is saying something different and not related to our vision, then sir, how uh, we will clarify after that? Mm. I think your question is, um, If the church, uh, so uh, I'm just trying to understand your question. Is it uh, is the question that you know, the, the church that you're part of uh, is wanting you to do something else, something different from what you want to do? Is that the question? Oh, the church vision is there. okay. All right. So yeah. So. Those, 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 those kind of situations do happen, right? Where maybe the, the church uh, may want you to do a certain kind of work or ministry. And whereas what is in your heart, maybe something different. So what would you do in a situation like that? Um, I, would, I would put before you two things to consider. One is the issue of timing, right? Maybe God has put something in your heart for you to do, which is your assignment, but uh, which may be very different from what the church wants you to do, right? So there's no question on it. God has put an assignment in your heart, but that's different from what the church wants you to do. But there's a matter of timing. Maybe God wants you to do it. God wants you to start that work maybe five years from now. Okay, so what are you going to do for the next five years? Well, for the next five years, just do what the church is telling you to do because that can be a learning experience for you. It can be a training experience. So for the next five years, you, um, you go along with the church, but you let them know that, hey, actually in my heart, I am interested in doing something different. That's what it is, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
I will, I, you know, I'm planning to do that, say, three or four or five years from now. So that's, that's in the future. But for now, I'm, I'm absolutely fine in, you know, going with what you're saying. So you work with them. Then when the time comes, you can, you can, you know, transition into what you really feel God wants you to do. However, if the assignment God has put in your life, God wants you to step into it now, right now. And the church is telling you to do something else. And that's when you prayerfully make the decision, say, okay, I'm going to obey God. And you explain it to the church saying, hey, uh, I feel that this is my assignment and I feel I need to move into it now. Uh, would you release me? And, you know, in most cases, the church will bless you and send you to go and do what you feel God to do, what wants you to do. So it's both the issue of what God wants you to do, which is ultimately what we all have to obey. And secondly, it's an issue of timing. Uh, uh, so depending on what, when God wants you to do. And thirdly, I think most importantly, is always do it in a very honorable way. That means always do it, uh, maintaining good relationships with the leadership, with other people. Uh, don't pursue, I mean, uh, try to avoid, you know, uh, doing something out of, uh, you know, all oh, these leaders don't understand me and they are so mean. And no, 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 just do it in a good way, honorable way, explain it to them. And I'm sure they will support. And, you know, so that's very important. The third thing, so obviously do it in a, in a very, uh, uh, you know, very, in, in a, with, with honor. Okay. All right. So let's go back now to the uh, notes here and move forward. So the next thing you want to do is uh, to start preparing for this. You know, in fact, uh, I, I like to encourage all of you who are in your third year to start thinking about what God wants you to do and start preparing for it. We know, okay, you have still have one more semester. Uh, you still have many more months. Uh, and, uh, you know, only in May of next, I mean, April end, you will, be graduating uh, May, sorry, April end, you'll finish your studies and May your first week or you'll be graduating. So you still have time, but I would encourage you to start planning, preparing from a distance, you know? So uh, that's the next thing is uh, if you are planning to go and start a church in some other city, uh, start preparing for it. I remember when we were living in the US, uh, we knew, uh, uh, my wife and I, we knew we were planning to move back to Bangalore. Uh, and, uh, you know, the time for us, uh, we were in Chicago at that time. And the time for us to move back to Bangalore was getting closer and closer. And uh, so a little over a year, one year, actually a little more than one year before we planned to move back to India, we started planning. So I wrote wrote some letters uh, to few pastors in Bangalore. Uh, I informed them that, uh, you know, we are planning to move back to Bangalore. Uh, uh, you know, I'd been away from Bangalore for about 10 years. So I uh, kind of lost touch with, and I hadn't visited too many times, maybe two or three times, three times, I think, two or three times I'd visited. Um, so, uh, but it's, those were very short visits. And so I really hadn't, you know, become very, I lost touch. I lost touch with a lot of people. So I wrote to these pastors asking them, you know, uh, first of all, informing them they're planning to come back to start a church. Secondly, asking them for some guidance, you know, which part of the city would be, you know, needs a church? Now, which part of the city, you know, would be good for us to start a church? Uh, so we kind of did those things. So, uh, and then of course, pray. So we started praying, praying for the city, praying for God to guide us, all of those things. So prepare from a distance. So we were in Chicago, but we were, we were preparing for Bangalore. So sometimes you may need to prepare from a distance. So you may be right now in one particular place, but God wants you to go and start to work in some other city or some other place. So you can prepare from a distance. You know, uh, you can uh, uh, gather a lot of information online. You can uh, survey the city online, you know, uh, get to understand. So get to understand the natural and spiritual dynamics of what's happening uh, in that city. 
you, from a distance. So, you know, online, you can read things. Uh, you can pray and think through on what's happening and write it down or discuss it with your team. So the team can start working together and say, hey, one year from now, we are going to go to Bangalore and we're going to start a church or we're going to go to Calcutta, we're going to go to, you know, Kathmandu, we're going to go to wherever and we're going to start a church. So let us start doing some research. Let us start understanding that city where we're going, uh, what is happening in that city, what are the kind of people living there? So the natural and the spiritual dynamic, you begin to study and the people, you know, you share that information, you can, so you can write down, you know, what are your findings? Uh, sometimes the Lord will speak to you on certain things. So write those thoughts down. And then as a team, you can pray over these things together and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, um, he might give you ideas. He might say, you know, focus on this area, uh, focus on this need or do this kind of work. So um, all, all this is part of preparing from a distance. Uh, something else that you can do is to develop a contact list. So if in case you already know people in that city or you have friends, uh, you can let them know ahead of time that uh, you know uh, this is what you're planning. You can ask them for information what's happening. Yeah, so they will give you first-hand information you can ask them to recommend places where uh, you can start a church or start a ministry. Now, which part of the city would be important? Uh, we will talk a little later on, uh, you know, finding the right place to launch. So that is also important, and like, we'll explain why. Uh, uh, so when you when you when you connect when you are preparing from a distance, you can connect with leaders in the city. You know, so you can inform them you're coming. You can maybe even talk to them, do calls with them. They will give you some background of the church in the city. So whatever you're doing, uh, you you want to be aligned to what God has already been doing in that city. So it's good to know, you know, because in most cities, uh, there ha there will be, you know, most cities, there would be some amount of Christian activity. Uh, that may have happened in the past or that is currently going on. And so it is good to know that. So you don't come in, uh, or let's say, so that you come in and you only build on it rather than, you know, destroying that. Um, provide, uh, you can ask for help in terms of logistics, you know, so if they're willing to help you in finding a place, uh, just helping you start, you know, you can get help. Uh, but if, you know, one very important rule that we, is um, if people are already part of a local church in a city, uh, don't pull them out. You know, don't tell them to leave their church and join your new church. You know, don't do that. And you know, let them always. They may be your good friends. They may be people you've known uh, for a long time. But let them remain where they are, uh, uh, unless God, you know, puts it into their hearts that they should come and be a part of what you're doing. If that is. If God puts it in their heart, that's up to them. And they need to, you know, uh, exit their existing church in a very honorable way. But you don't go and tell them to pull, pull out, you know. Everything has to be done in a very nice way. So and these are things uh, that we can do to prepare from a distance. You know, so even before you actually go into that place where you want to start a church or a or a Christian work, you know, you can do a lot of preparation even from a distance, you know, uh, things that we have mentioned here. And let's just um, uh, just cover one more point before we close today. Uh, and then eventually you'll have to relocate. You know, you'll have to actually go physically into that city or into that part of the city where you're going to start the ministry. Right. So this, for this, of course, you need to know when God wants you to do it. Uh, I remember, you know, when, again, just going back to our own personal example, uh, when we were living in the U.S., I, I knew right from the beginning, you know, uh, I'm in the U.S. On a, uh, for a, I'm in the U.S. temporarily, mainly for my education and get some professional experience. But I knew I was going to go back to Bangalore and, you know, plant a church and minister in India. But throughout my time, my prayer was, God, show me when you want me to go back. I want to be ready personally 
I want to be ready spiritually and professionally to make this move. Show me when, you know, so that would be my constant prayer. I want to be ready and I want to move at the right time. And I remember uh, in uh, I, the, uh, the year was, I think it was 1998. I think it was somewhere around that time, uh, uh, the, the second part of the year, uh, when I made a trip to India, and uh, I, I traveled in the, at that time. I traveled primarily through North India to do some Christian meetings, seminars, and crusade and all that. Uh, it was on that trip uh, that I felt strongly in my heart: it's time to move back move back, take one year uh, to prepare yourself. So I, uh, again, my dates might be a little off here. It is either end of 98 or end of 99 that uh, that this was, that uh, you know, I had made the trip. And during that trip, I thought, okay, it's time for you to move. One year, prepare yourself. So uh, when I went back to the US, I shared this with my wife. And I said, look, you know, one year from now, we are going to go back. Actually, we took more than one year, maybe a year and a half or so. But then, uh, since I was working with a company and I was, you know, heading up a project and all of that, um, uh, oh, even more than six months, and I forget exactly again, maybe eight months, eight months before I could move back, I informed my organization. I said, see, I'm actually planning to relocate back to India. I'm heading up this project, but you need to find somebody to replace me. So I'm telling you, you know, in advance uh, so that, uh, you know, um, I don't want the project and all of that work to be dis disrupted because we are serving customers. Uh, so I'm telling you eight months in advance, you know, so many months in advance that December of 2000, uh, we are moving back to India. So I give them, so, you know, there, there's a lot of preparation spiritually, practically, you know, a lot of details. So, uh, but the timing is important. And I felt in my heart, this is the time to go. And I set the time, December 2000, we are moving back to India. And then we started preparing for that, you know, uh, uh, different things that need to, you know, be arranged, be organized. Uh, we started taking care of it one by one, right? So uh, uh, after you've done, you know, your research, the time will come, you know, you have to move. But how do you determine that? Well, you have to ask God, you know, and God will let you know, you know, either he will speak to you in your heart, maybe he will orchestrate things, um, he will open up doors, uh, you know, different ways that God will uh, uh, let you know, you know, when is the time for you to move, get into that place. Um, so, um, have a plan on how you would go about, you know, okay, um, once I move to that place, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, I, I I have to do this, I have to go through, you know, surveying, I got to do some preparation, and I've got to go through the launch, right? So you have a plan. In fact, uh, we, we, you know, we wrote we actually wrote down our plan. This is how we're going to launch the church. Now, not everything is going to work out according to plan because uh, some unexpected things can happen. And in our case, it didn't work out exactly as the launch didn't happen as we planned it. But we had thought through on many things. So even though the launch didn't happen the way we wanted it, we thought it would happen. We were fine because we had also thought through on what we would do beyond starting the church. What was the vision? What was the purpose? How are we going to develop people? So because we had spent a lot of time in preparation, even if there are slight changes, you know, uh, in, in what you're going to do, it's not going to shake you. You, you know, you've thought past, you know, just the launch. You've thought, prepared yourself for the long term. Uh, and so you can stay the course even if there are some minor changes that you need to make, right? So um, I'm going to pause here. The, the, you know, we'll get into all these practical things uh, as we um, talk about uh, getting ready. But 
what we have said today is this, that as you get ready to start a church or any ministry, first, it, the core team is important. Now, sometimes you may do it all by yourself. That's fine. Um, but in most cases, you would have a core team. And we talked about uh, you know, what you need, what you need in the people who are going to be part of the core team. Second, we talked about prepare, preparing, and you can even prepare from a distance. Even before you actually get on the ground uh, to get started, you can prepare for the ministry, you can prepare for that church plant uh, from a distance. And uh, third, we said uh, uh, the timing, you know, to know God's timing on when you should get on the ground, when you should move, you know, get into that particular city or area or region where God wants you to start. And, uh, you know, that relocating is something uh, God would guide us. Okay. So let me pause here. Are there any questions so far on uh, what we have looked at today? Any questions? Everyone's okay? Okay, all right, no questions, things are clear. Fine, all right, so we're going to pick this up later this week. Um, we will, um, I mean, sorry, I guess tomorrow. <laughs> we'll continue this tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about, you know, just, just build different practical things and that you can think about when you're getting ready to start a local church or ministry and where God is leading you, okay? Uh, let's close in prayer. I uh, just invite uh, somebody to uh, please pray with us as a class and dismiss us. Um, Dave, you want to pray? Sure, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time, for this life that we had, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you're teaching us so much, Lord God. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you help us to understand each and every single thing that we are uh, being taught, Lord Jesus. And be with each one of us as we depart from this class, Lord Jesus. Help us to um, keep everything that we learn so that we can use it in our practical life, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you for being with us in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye now. Thank you, sir. Thank you.